In this video, I'll try to fix my student's track. And if your tracks sound like this. And you want to make them sound like this. Then simply join my Facebook group. As you know, guys, I'm working on the course. Uh, we are getting more people in the group and we are slowly approaching the start day of the course. So And if you love making music, don't forget to grab my free cheat sheet called Seven Things You Don't Need to Become a Music Producer. With that being said, let's start with the tutorial. I want to start by uh, grouping the uh, the sounds, the elements properly uh, in in groups. You know, so we're gonna call this low end. So usually I do like this, and. Um, here I see like it's not a mistake uh, you can do that but I I make it in slightly different way so first of all what what I don't like here is how you uh, approach uh, like the MIDI if you can call it like that so uh, instead of using audio what I would do uh, I would just delete this kick and I'm going to start from scratch. So this is going to be our base, uh, and this is going to be our base too. So uh, we can start from scratch, and I'm going to import a MIDI clip, and we are going to uh, just find a nice kick that fits the vibe. So usually I I go to this sample pack, and let's search for some cool kicks. Maybe we can choose the classic ones. This one's pretty cool. Let's try this out. Right, so uh, then I'm going to delete all the processing and we are going to start from scratch. So first thing we want to do, we want to make sure we balance the sounds, uh, the volume of the kick and of the bass properly. Uh, I'm trying to find a good kick. Let's choose this one. It's pretty, pretty classic tech house kind of kick. So let's play it. And just want to make sure I don't have anything on the master and on the groups. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so I usually set my kick at minus six. And let's call this kick. And do like this. So the next thing I want to do, I want to balance my bass. And usually uh, it's minus 12. So if my kick is minus six, my bass is going to be minus 12. And uh, my... Yeah. So yeah, if my kick is minus six, uh, my bass is going to be minus twelve. So if you sit, uh, if your kick is uh, minus twelve, that basically means that you you will need to set your bass at minus uh, eighteen. So basically, uh, six decibels uh, volume difference. Uh, then what we want to do, we want to apply some side chain just to make sure uh, we get some space for our kick and the mix. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the volume shaper. So you can hear the uh, the kick properly because without that, if we listen uh, on the master, this is with side chain, right? Sounds good. You can hear the kick. Uh, and the next thing you could do, uh, so for example, without the side chain, you can hear some artifacts. So this is what you want to do. Always make sure that you are using side chain so you have free space for your kick. So yeah, uh, we've set up our our kick and the bass. Like it's, it's a good start. Uh, of course, I'm going to tweak it. 
yeah, we get some kind of kind of vibe. So the next thing uh, is the is the hats. So I, I kind of see the problem with the hats uh, that uh, you have too many tracks. So I'm going to show you how to how to work with your drums. So we can do like this, and we could do like this. Uh, I think this is the vocal, so let's do like this. So you really want to group your instruments in in a nice way. So you, so you see, for example, the drums. You see the low end. You can choose I don't know just colors you like. I use, for example, for the, for my drums, I use pink. For uh, for the low end, I use yellow. And uh, what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm going to delete the tracks because uh, it, it's too complicated. I just want to show you the way how you could work with with your drums. Uh, this is the collapse. So let's do like this. And uh, what we want to do now, we want to add some hats. So I'm going to add some hats and I'm going to find samples. So let's find something here. So I want to listen to the kick and to the bass to kind of get the idea uh, which hat I'd like to add. This one is pretty housey, like it. Let's try this one. Yeah, so that's going to be our hat. Uh, then we want to add some claps. So I'm going to uh, do something like like this. Yeah, so we got our claps. Cool. Yeah. So we are starting to get a uh, kind of nice sound. So as you can see here, I've grouped uh, the the hats, the claps. So uh, the benefit of using this approach. So for example, if I want to add more hats to to this pattern, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this to to the drum rack. I don't want to find some you know additional hats that I want to use. For example, if we would do something like this, I could layer my hats like this. So I'm just going to copy this. So it's really it's really easy to do and as you can see, I'm not using like a bunch of tracks as in the previous example. So I would really, really recommend using this approach. I know people are using audio, but I think that's, that's just not effective. That's not effective. That's not how I would do this. So yeah, uh, I would really recommend using this way. All right, so uh, the next thing is, let's maybe do the snare just to see if that sounds good. Sounds pretty good. I want to tweak the length. Something like this. Yeah, so we get a nice and fat like clap snare. Yeah, so we are starting to get that vibe. Uh, then I want to tweak my hats. And this one as well. So when I finish with the drums, with the bass, uh, then we can start ranging. This is how I usually like work on my tracks. Something like this. Yeah, that, that works. So uh, I'm just going 
going to delete everything that we don't use something like this let's add shaker i think shaker was good so i'm not going to change it something like this yeah that's groovy so let's listen with the other percussion Yeah, and we also have the second shaker. I think I want to make it shorter because it's really, like, really, really long. Something like like this maybe would work. Uh, honestly, I don't like how it sounds because we get too many elements in the same register, in the higher register, and they clash with each other. So this is why I'm going to delete this, and I'm going just to keep the, the original shaker, like this. Yeah, and then we can start working with the vocal. Let's try and make something with the vocal. Maybe uh, this part. Yeah, I like this part. So let's try and loop it. And uh, just do something. Uh, it's not really the best quality. So I'm going to try and play with the vocal. Maybe chill it a little. And here, I think we can do something like this just to add some variation so it doesn't sound too boring. This is obviously not like a really good vocal example, but still, I think it sounds pretty, pretty good. Uh, now, what we could do, we could work on the bass line. So for the bass line, uh, I'm going to make it about five bars long. And maybe we can try and play around with uh, with the bass line. So because I want to add some variation at the end. Here, I think we can do something like, maybe something like this. Doesn't sound really good. So I'm trying to search like for a good melody for the bass line. Something like, something like this. Yeah, I think that would work. Maybe like this. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And let's make this shorter. So something like this. Or maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not sure here. Maybe it's, it's gonna be better if we just keep the original, like five bars. Yeah, let's play together with the vocal. The 
yeah, it's really lo not the best vocal here, so it's, it's gonna be really hard to make something, like, something good out of this. But, like, the bass line, I like uh, the groove, I like how it sounds, but the vocal doesn't really work, so I don't know what really to do here. Because that, that's, that's the main issue right now. Uh, we can play around with the sound a little. Yeah, so what I've done here, uh, I've changed the wave, like, uh, how you call this, like, warp, modes, whatever. Uh, you get what I mean. So. It was like that, and the bass line wasn't fat enough, so I felt like I wanted to just go with the basic wave shapes, waveforms, like square, sine. Uh, when you utilize these in Tech House or any kind of genre, this is how you can get really fat sounds. So if you compare this one, it's really fat, right? Something like this. And then we also make, then need to make sure that our envelope is not too long. So for the release, it's okay. For the decay time, maybe we could increase the, the sustain. And the same for the, for the envelope. And maybe decrease a little the, actually it's fine. Something like this, yeah. Yeah, sounds cool. Maybe I'd like to change the, the kick. Maybe this one. And make it shorter, because I, I feel like it clashes with the bass. And the next thing I'm going, I'm going to do is to uh, add saturation to my kick and the bass. So what we could do here, we could add some... Yeah, that sounds groovy. Yeah, cool. Let's maybe try and layer the bass. Honestly, I don't really like the sound, so uh, I'm going to replace them. So uh, let's, yeah, let's just make it from scratch. So the thing with layering is to not to layer too much, because if you do that, it, it can sound like, you know, not really good. So uh, instead of that, we want to focus on, on good sounds. So for example, let's take the classic, like, drum machine sound. Something like this. And maybe I'm going to layer it with another sound. Just real quick, uh, stacked and layered. So let's do like this. Yeah, let's just layer two, maybe three claps. Something like this. Yeah, cool. And maybe another one just to make it. Something like this. I'm going to add like a pre delayed clap uh, to make that classic house. Something like this would definitely work. Yeah, something like this. Let's make it shorter. Maybe we don't even need this clap. Actually, it's fine. Yeah, so 
we're starting to get some kind of a nice groove. Uh, I would like to add some rights to add energy to my to my drum loop. So let's search for the rights. I think this one would work. So let's just copy the the pattern. Do like this and uh, tweak the the length of the right. Add some attack and make it a bit quieter. Yeah, we're starting to get some kind of a nice groove. So um, let's add some side chain to our drums. So we're going to do like this. I like it. it. Sounds pretty cool. Fine. Yeah. Uh, now what we could do, we could try maybe add some chords. So I'm going to try and add some housey chords. Uh, let's open up Cork M1. This is so far one of my favorite pianos for now. Uh, you don't have to use exactly like the same stuff I'm using in, in, in this video, but this is just the tools I use for my tracks. So for example, uh, our track is in key of F, so we are going to add some F chords. Let's do like this, minor, and we're going to add this housey kind of, kind of chord. Uh, the piano, uh, I think should work. And this is going to go to another group. Just a quick reminder, guys, so you don't forget to group your tracks properly. It goes to the instruments. This is how I group, and this is what you can do instruments uh, in your tracks as well. So it's going to go to the instruments. I feel like here I need some kind of like a fill maybe with a melody. Yeah, sounds good to me. Let's add side chain to the instruments. can move around the chord maybe and see if it works. No, I actually like it here. Maybe we could do some... No, let's keep the original one. I don't think we need more than that. Now I feel like we need to add some kind of lead sound. So let's search real quick for some for some lead sounds. I'm just going to you know search for my presets so we don't waste a lot of time on on making the sounds from scratch. Because I usually make sounds from scratch myself, but I'm not against presets at all. So we can. Uh, Something like this.
maybe I can come up, come up with some cool lead melody. Because we have some chords here and I don't want them to play at the same time so, so they clash together. So this is why we need to think about where we could put the melody. this and I also feel like I need something something like either here or maybe something here Yeah, sounds good. Uh, it's it's tricky sometimes because it might sound like too repetitive and uh, and yeah, this might be a problem. But it's not always like that because sometimes when your track is repetitive, it's like it's not a problem because electronic dance music. I mean, it's pretty repetitive. If we look at the structure and if we listen to it, yeah, it's not a huge deal. I mean. The whole point of that is to just add variation to your track. So even though it, it might be the same, because this is almost like a full track, really. I'm just going to maybe add a couple of elements and basically that's it. Maybe I could try to add some additional drums, but like really you don't need a lot. Yeah, the vocal is not really good, so I, I don't think I'm going to use it. And uh, one more thing about Tech House. Tech House is not really about um, chord progressions, melodies, stuff like that. So, as you can see here, you are... You have melodies, right? And they are pretty repetitive. And they come, like at some point in the track but they are not like like a full melody which evolves over time it can be like in progressive house like melodic house similar genres maybe in pop music but in tech house you are focusing on short like bursts so this is this is how you make melodies for tech house yeah of course i mean you can make some some cool melodies that that could play like the whole bar it really up up how you want to do this but really it's like you can do this either way. And here I feel like we need some another lead, so uh, I'm going to use Serum as well. So let's just copy this guy. Uh, do something like this and search for some, some other cool lead sounds. Uh, let's try that. Not sure about this one. Not my thing. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. Yeah, really generic, basic kind of lead, but I like it. Sounds pretty cool. Why not? Let's have it. And here we need some kind of a fill. So our loop resolves in a nice way. Something like, like this. And then we need to find uh, the right place for our melody. Basically what you could do, you could just copy the bass line and you can layer it with the lead. And I think it's going to have a pretty nice impact together with the bass. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like it. I like how it sounds. Really cool vibe. So let's continue with that. So here, what I would like to do, uh, I would like to 
to something like this because I'm not really satisfied with the sound. Oops, I think I've done something wrong here. Should be like that. Maybe um, just I just want to keep the uh, the other three notes. Something like like this, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what next should we do? Maybe we could add, let me search for some for some vocals I could add here. So for example, we could maybe take some vocals from this pack. Let me, let me search. Yeah, let's take this one. Why not? And I'm going to make the track a bit slower. Oh, actually, it's 128. So make, let's do like this. And something like... I don't really like how it sounds. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to find the right vocal for the track. Maybe this one. Maybe I'm I'm not even going to include the vocal. Oh, actually, uh, yeah. Let's ditch the vocal. Let's just focus on on the main arrangement. So. And here, what I want to do. I want to add some return tracks because uh, um, in this project I didn't see any return tracks. Basically, if I would have to explain the difference between having the return tracks or using reverb just you know uh, on your channel, the main difference is that using return tracks is a good is a good thing when you working with the space like with reverbs in in your whole track but uh, you can use reverb on individual channels if you are doing some kind of creative like sound design thing yeah in this case that could be an option but if we are working like for the reverb we need to you know add reverb to the drums to the leads it's much better to have uh, reverb on your return channel. Same with delay with any kind of effects. So uh, let's try and add some reverb to this track because I want to add some to my lead sounds. Something like this. And here. Here I want to have a lot of reverb. Yeah, cool. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is uh, to add some some processing to my master channel and uh, apply some saturation. And what we could do here, we could automate the the cutoff just a little because here, as you guys can see, we have this lead and. Um, I don't want this lead to interfere with the bass. But even with this little automation, you can really feel how we change the energy in our track. So that's the thing. Maybe 
I'd like to change the maybe make it longer I think that would that would fit yeah something like this yeah that could work and I also feel we need something here so I'm going to add another base layer and it's going to be one of the presets I use oh, let me check should be this one yeah and uh, here what I want to do I want to add some kind of an impact uh, so for the imp impact it's, it's, it's a bit loud so something like this so we want to have like a brass sound uh, and it could be something like this yeah get the idea and uh, don't forget about the side chain for every base layer we are using we need to have the side chain add some reverb add even more reverb We could uh, close the filter just a little. Yeah, just make it short. Like, I wanted to make it short and snappy. Not really snappy, but short. This one should be louder. we could layer the base even more so we could copy this right the last four notes and we could layer this with another base so let's do something like so let's do something like 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 this uh, I'm going to search for some more presets in C room uh, I think we are almost finished with the arrangement uh, and uh, yeah, let's layer the base first and then I'm going to try to make a, a build. Uh, it's going to be a bit empty without the vocal because vocal is really what makes the track full. But still, I want to show you that it's it's actually easier than you might think. So let's let's search for some good bass first. Something like this. Well, actually, I think uh, it's not possible because it clashes. Sounds okay. Mm, I'm not sure here. Because it, it might be the problem. Maybe, maybe this one. Yeah, let's just try it out. I mean, we can delete this if we don't like and if it doesn't work. But still, I mean, it's worth trying at least, I think. Yeah, so... Yeah, let's try it. I can't really hear this bass, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but... You can do that if you like. Uh, I just want to teach you how you could make your transitions, make your loops more interesting. And th this is one of the ways how you can do this. This one should be even shorter. Yeah, 
like this. And uh, we can work on the drums just a little bit more. So it's going to be claps. It's going to be snare, shaker. So uh, we have some percussion here. Yeah, let's try and use these sounds that we have because adding these little sounds is so, so important. Yeah, somewhere here, I think it sounds cool. And this one, I think it should be here. Yeah, like here. And this one should be over here, I think. Yeah, so place together with uh, with our bass and um, with the lead. So uh, when we play together the transient of the sound, because this one has transient, right? Together with uh, with the melody, it kind of emphasizes the power of the melody. So it could be a really nice thing to have. This one I want to make and make it shorter. So something like something like this could work as well. Yeah. And make it a bit quieter. And we could also add some delay. So basically, I'm going to just, I'm going to add one more uh, return channel, and uh, let's add some delay here. Make sure to set it 100% wet because it's a return channel. You know, I thought about that we could, maybe we could replace this, actually just put it like here. search for some other sounds. I think that was everything. Yeah, so we are almost done. do some something like this automate uh, the piano so it doesn't sound exactly the same you can open uh, the filter maybe here here just add some variation be creative to try and add some vocal so I'm just going to record my vocal and I'm going to just try and make some some kind of cool effects out of this um, right, so let's try and speak just a little and I'm going to make some cool FX sound out of this vocal uh, I thought it would be cool to say house music and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play around with the vocal real quick so we kind of get the vocal uh, for our track. So something like, like this. 
But this one is cool. Let's play together with the bass. Sometimes you really have to play around with the vocal and see if that works. This one I like. This one could be could could work, I think. Sometimes not, so you have to to do some. But I've done that like many times. I just wanted to show you guys the approach how you could do this. Yeah, let, let's try and just play around a bit more. really work but uh, I mean you, you can use this approach it's it's really powerful tool maybe we can reverse it well actually I think if we get just like a good vocal here it would fit so much better than than actually my bad vocal so yeah now as you can see we've got so far now uh, uh I'm, I'm not going to use this one i'm not going to use this one this one is empty so we get around how many tracks so we are we have 21 track so now let's try and arrange the track real quick i will i will teach you how to start a track from from catchy hook so are we going to start somewhere like i think here so this is going to be our start let's do like this it's going to be in it's going to be the drop and here now i'd like to start the track so real quick i'm going to do like this i'm going to apply the filter So this is going to be the start of our track, and uh, we want to uh, we want to add some some effects. So uh, let's search for some noise tools. Uh, I think I I know what kind of of what kind of sound I want to get. So it's this one. This one is pretty cool. And then we want to add some uh, like claps. Not the claps, but snaps. Usually for, for my breaks, I use snaps a lot. I'm just going to search for some cool uh, claps. Uh, yeah, let's search for some like a snap kind of kind of sound. Uh, I think this one would work. Here we want to start introducing the snares. I'm obviously not going to do a lot of details here because I'm, I'm I don't have that much time because <laughs> I want to do as much as I can in like one hour. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, let me search for the snare sound. Uh, let's search for some I don't know process. This one's pretty cool. 
could work, I think. So here I'm going to do like this. Oops. And then we are just going to copy uh, these sounds. Uh, then I want to do like this. So this is basically the main buildup. And in the build, build, we want to add some uh, more of these effects. So it's going to be noise tools. Let's search for some some other cool sounds. Yeah, let's go for this one. I'm not really picky right now, so uh, this is gonna be our our snap. This is gonna be our snare snare build. And here, what you could do, you could do this uh, like this sound. Uh, to make the transition smoother, we can do something like this. Here we could go for a crash. Maybe here we could uh, we could disable the filter, you know, just to add start with something catchy and I think with the baseline you can start so imagine that here we have a vocal so we're just gonna start with with the kick with the bass cool Yeah, this is the main build. So here I want to automate the filter, open it. Then I want to add uh, a drone, so let's search for instruments. We can search for some. Uh, let me let me think. Let me think. Instrument frag. I think it should be uh, the strings, and I want to search. I just want to search for a drone kind of sound, because in house music, it's a really common thing to use drones in in buildups. Uh, you will get what I'm talking about just in a second. Uh, then we want to automate the, the snare. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like this. Maybe we can add some piano. Pretty much it. Um, so I think we are done for today. Um, 
just let me know what you guys think in the comments if you like the end results if you think i could develop this idea i think i didn't even change the base a lot i've just added this uh like this how you call this let's fill I would say so yeah uh, i've kept the main idea added some some variation to the track and yeah i like it i like it i would definitely play this uh track in the club once it's it's finished but for for the basic idea uh, if you get the vocal it's going to sound really cool i think that's that could be like commercial kind of sound easily i mean it's minimal it's it's catchy i like the sound it makes me want to want to move want to dance so i think it's it could be a good track so yeah that was it for today guys thank you for watching this video if you would like to learn how to make commercial music like music i've shown you in this video and this free training uh just join my group and uh, I'll talk to you there. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. And I see you in the next one.